Michael Jackson was involved in the illegal use of an FM pirate radio transmitter. Nope, this isn't clickbait. Believe it or not, it's entirely true, and this story came from one of his sound engineers, Brad Sundberg. Oh, and no, this isn't the actual transmitter, unfortunately. Back in 1990, Record One Recording Studios in Sherman Oaks, California, was home to the recording of Michael Jackson's Dangerous album. Recording studios are pristine environments for creating and mixing perfect sounding audio, but Michael wanted to hear how his songs would sound to the average Joe just listening on a car stereo. One afternoon, he asked Brad if there was a way that this could be achieved, and Brad came up with an amazing idea. The idea was that legendary sound engineer Bruce Swedeen would make a mix in the studio, then they'd all go out to the car to hear the mix on the FM radio. Back then, you couldn't just go out and buy an FM transmitter legally, or at least over a certain power output, so Brad brought a kit from a company. These transmitters couldn't be sold in full, but could be sold as a kit. Brad got the kit back to the studio, and with the help of some others assembled everything together, along with an FM antenna. Bruce would then do a mix and record it onto cassette. The cassette was then played on a deck, which fed the transmitter. The transmitter was on the frequency of 89.5 MHz and worked brilliantly. Once the mix was playing, Bruce, Brad and Michael, and whoever else was around, would go out to the car and listen to the mix, and this would give a real-life sense of how the end product would sound on the radio. This became quite a frequent event, and it wasn't unusual for everybody to be sat outside in the studio car park in their cars, listening to the latest unreleased mixes of Michael Jackson songs. The transmitter was only low-powered. Brad didn't say how many watts, but he said it worked within two or three blocks of the studio, so I'm guessing it was probably a couple of watts. After the mix was listened to, the whole thing was turned off, and it was only used throughout the recording of the Dangerous album, which was released in 1991. Brad was concerned that the FCC would be out looking for illegal transmitters, but nothing ever happened. He still has the transmitter and the antenna to this day. So, there you go, that's the very brief but very true story of Michael Jackson's brush with the world of pirate radio.